I'll tell you what. If you could think of something really fun to do, I'll stay home tonight. Okay? Okay, okay. Gonna make it tonight. It's a bad hair day, so. Give your family everything. Looking good. Give them your time. From the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. <laughs> I'll be honest, at first, I mean, I was really frightened. Can you imagine a man my size playing hopscotch? <laughs> you know what? It really got things going. I mean, we related. I just stopped what I was doing and asked my daughter what she wanted to do. Very good. Next week's assignment is to eat dinner together every night and tell me what changes in your family. Class dismissed. Give your family everything. Give them your time. From the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Andy Toulson has seen a very interesting first half where both teams have shot the basketball very well and uh, we've seen some end-to-end -end basketball. Nobody's been shy about shooting the ball, so uh, it's been a pretty entertaining basketball game so far. Yeah, both teams really shot the ball well. You know, BYU at 58%, uh, no, actually Weber State at 58%, BYU at 48%. BYU's knocked down half their threes, kind of kept them in the game. Points off turnovers have been huge as well. Yeah, let's take a look at our first half stats, guys, and we can see that because that number really jumps out at me. The points off turnovers, Andy, 16 to 2, the margin. And uh, you're right, that is, I mean, that is huge. Both teams over 50% shooting. We talked about Weber State having to take care of the basketball, and the turnovers really have to come back to bite them, but the only thing keeping the Cougars in it as we look at our first half highlights brought to us by Robert J. DeBry is the fact that they are able to hit from long range. I mean, they've hit 50% of their long range tries. Well, and I think Coach Randy Ray is going to take his chances on that in the second half as well. I would expect him to come out in some zone. You know, BYU can cool down a little bit from the three. I think the Wildcats will be right in the game. And for Weber State, they've uh, keeping them in the game has been the play of redshirt freshman Kyle Bollinger. I mean, he's got 16 points in that first half, and he showed the opportunity and the ability to hit from three. He hit three threes in a row, two of them right out front there, and then one from the elbow. And uh, and he's not shy about going inside either. Yeah, what a half he had. I'm sure Dave Rose talked a little bit about that in the uh, locker room here over the last 10, 15 minutes. And so the net result here at halftime, we have a BYU lead, but it's anything but secure. And these two basketball teams couldn't have come in in much different form. BYU coming in unbeaten, but four of their six wins were at home. They'd had a couple of road games. They they had coasting games. They really, the average margin of victory over 20. Now they're in a tighter basketball game. It'll be interesting to see if they can, how they fare there. And also the interesting thing for Weber State, Andy, is that they played great first halves this season, but they kind of faded in the stretch and it'll be interesting to see if they can hold it together for the second like half. you say they have had large leads in the first half uh, just to let them fritter away and uh, fall behind Long Beach State they had over a 20 point lead came back and lost uh, you know we'll see what happens I think Randy Ray has talked I'm sure he's talked a lot about that with these players hey we need to have a solid effort for all 40 minutes and in this building they are a different basketball team so we're at the break and it's BYU with the lead second half is coming up and we'll be right back with it
Halftime here in Ogden and a 46-39 BYU lead over the Weber State Wildcats, but a lot to cheer about for the hometown fans here in the first half. Their Wildcats played a pretty solid half of basketball, and if they take care of the ball, Andy Toulson, they really don't have the position and the predicament they're in right now because those turnovers resulting in 16 BYU points. Exactly, that's key. You know, we talked about that before the game. BYU has done a great job these first six games of getting turnovers, you know, causing turnovers, getting out early in transition. It's been huge, 16 to 2 and for the, BYU. Those keys to the game, Andy, we talked about. The defensive rebounds for BYU. Uh, Weber State has out-rebounded them, but BYU shot the ball so well, and they more than compensated because of the uh, the fast break. Run, run, run. Uh, the fast break points, uh, just the two, but the points off turnovers are 16, so it's compensated for their deficiency on the board. And Weber State play a full 40 minutes. The jury's still out. They play a pretty solid first half, except for the... Uh, except for taking care of the basketball and protecting the ball. No, they didn't do it. They they gave up the turnovers and uh, and that allowed for the 16 points. And we're back underway here in the second half as Miles gets it in deep and tries to spin on panels here. Use that class boy. That's a nice touch by the big man Chris Miles to open the half. Boy, that'll be big for BYU. If Chris Miles can do that consistently throughout this season, be a huge help for BYU. They get a help for the Cougars. Let's see what they do on the defensive side of things because in that first half, defensively, as they knock down the shooter on the play, and it's Nick Hansen who'll be going to the free throw line after the, the bump and the foul. But defensively, I know BYU's got some adjustments to make in the second half. Yeah, I, you know, Dave Rose, I'm sure he's talked about it at halftime. He's, they want to get closer to those shooters, not let them have those open looks. You know, if a team shoots 58%, it's going to be tough. Nick Hansen getting fouled on the shot. Shooting three, played at College of Southern Idaho, served an LDS mission to Mexico. And quiet in the first half. In fact, he was 0 for 2 from the floor. And uh, this is his first opportunity at the line, and he makes it count. So it's an eight-point lead, and Hanson a chance to cut two off of that. Well, that one falls in and out of the basket as Lamont Morgan Jr. checks in real early in this second half for Jackson Emery, replacing him and now Hanson with the third of his three free throws. As you saw Dave Rose talking to his sophomore guard, Jackson Emery. There's Hanson. He got two out of three, and it's 48-41, so the teams trade two points here as we start the second half. Yeah, Nick Hanson, the all-time leading scorer at Pocatello High School up in Idaho. I played in that gym a few times. <laughs> Little hand fighting underneath, and Damian Lillard is going to come out the worst for wear because he's going to be tagged with a personal foul. Well, he's guarding a, a John Wooden Award candidate. When you're a freshman and you start banging around and the referee has a question, who's he going to give the call to? And Lee Kamard knows how to sell it, too. You don't stay this long, as you said in the, in the pregame show. Some consideration for going to the NBA last year. I think it was probably a good move that he didn't, as this one sneaks over the front of the rim for Lee. That extra year of maturity, and you know because, I mean, you've experienced it both, the collegiate level and the NBA level. Good move to stay and get the extra year. Oh, definitely. You know, I, I think uh, Lee will benefit greatly from that. What? Think by Miles inside on Panos, excuse me. And I think he'll improve his uh, possible draft position situation next season, and he's having a great year thus far. If his team can do well, that'll help him as well. And delay a game warning against BYU. Kamard, you saw how quickly catch and elevate. Here's the block on the other end by Miles. Chris Miles had a real solid year these first six games doing exactly what coach Dave Rose wants him to do he'd like to have uh, Chris Miles you know, shoot for double double figures and points and rebounds Lillard and he'll go inside and he's blocked again this time Miles gets it and it goes out of bounds not able to retain possession and now we've got a foul call yeah it'll be the ball and basketball underneath for Weaver so no shooting but Miles committing the foul thought that he had a pretty good block on the play but the official said he got him on the block and it's 52 41 BYU Weaver State with a basketball and Randy Ray wants a, a timeout we'll take a full timeout We've only played a minute and a half of the second half, but it's 52-41 Cougars, and we'll return to Ogden right after this. I was actually born in West Africa in uh, Côte d'Ivoire. Uh, it's also known as the Ivory Coast. That's where, uh, that's where my parents and I are originally from. And uh, I moved to the States when I was about seven years old. Draw, cook, 
bake, <laughs> um, and you know, put up extra shots. I always like to go in the gym and shoot. I like uh, I like to cook African food. Um, that's like that's my favorite food, and I've had a lot of experience learning from my mom. So yeah, that's probably what I like. We eat a lot of like rice and vegetables and fish and chicken and steak and stuff like that. You know, I, I draw a lot of um, like still life. Like I just. Sometimes I just go outside and just draw what I see. I draw like a lot of basketball players and stuff. That, I did a lot of that when I was younger. Um, but now so I just, I draw still life. Like I'll set something up and I'll draw or you know, I like to do portraits like of people and stuff. Football or lacrosse? At prep school in New Hampshire I actually learned how to play lacrosse a little bit. So and that's just also a sport I find pretty exciting. Short pole, I'd probably play, I'd probably play a uh, attacker. Um, I tried long pole, but it was a little hard for me. <laughs>
I think he's really going to have a, a nice career the next 10, 12, 15 years. So Randy Ray has talked things over. There's a look at the line on Lee Kamard for the night. He's got 22 points, pair of rebounds, pair of assists. Well, and he gets them so easy. You know, you, you just don't realize he's got 21 points at this point in the game. You look up at the board, there they are. Hanson on the outside. He's working against Fredette. Now Davis from the corner over Kamard, and Davis has a three. So again, coming out of the timeout, we were able to get what they wanted, an open look, and Davis able to knock it down. Lamont Morgan looks inside. He's got it and dropped for Kamard. Tavernari, his three is off the mark. Tavernari not on uh, in sync tonight. His shooting touch betrays him a little bit as there's a jump ball and panels goes to the floor. And it's going to be possession to Weber State. Substitution, Marcus Carson coming in for the Wildcats, but he'll do that after we step aside. 15-52 remaining in this basketball game, and BYU holding the 12-point advantage. Married. No, we're hopefully no more than one or two kids. You know, got to go easy. Probably going to be drafted, playing the NBA. You know, at you know one of the best times of my life. My mom and I have a really special relationship that you know, goes beyond the basketball court. And, you know, she is truly the most important woman in my life. She didn't want to leave me anymore with my nanny. <clears throat> so she was like, well, just come to the, no, just start coming to the gym with me. So I was pretty much educated and, and raised, you know, inside a basketball court. Um, and then one day, you know, I got invited to go to church and I went and I saw my friends there. Everybody saw in school. So I was like, man, this is a spot to be on Sunday. You no, know, never really, never really, you know, thought about getting baptized until, you know, I read the Book of Moroni, um, you know, when he promises us that, you know, asking he shall receive. Got baptized and, you know, and everything else is history. Very extra confident person with an outgoing personality, a very strong personality, you know, kind of hard-headed sometimes, sometimes being a little knucklehead. Uh, the Infinite Atonement. Elder Maxwell wrote that and it's just a phenomenal book. I love Shakespeare too. Can't, can't forget Shakespeare. I'm a, I'm a huge, monumental Shakespeare fan. I like shopping. Um, I'm addicted. I have two cell phones. I'm addicted to my cell phone. So I'm text messaging like pretty much 24 7, 365. Jazz is your home for college basketball. This Saturday, another great matchup. The Utah State Aggies will host the same BYU Cougars, but they're going to be playing at a neutral site, Energy Solutions Arena. And you can catch it all beginning at 5 o'clock right here on KJAZ TV, your TV for life. That's tough on the Aggies because they are so difficult to beat up in Logan, and yet their home game is going to be at Energy Solutions Arena, the neutral site. So uh, well, there, a there, great equalizer, I guess. There's a reason Dave Rose did not <laughs> want to go up the spectrum in Logan. Uh, it's the same reason people don't want to go to the Marriott Center. Ball stolen by Fredette. And Fredette with the breakaway basket. Can't be happy about that if you're Randy Ray. Again, turnovers. It, it's been the bane of the Wildcats in this early season. They got away from it. Had a season-low nine in the game the other night against Montana Tech. But uh, BYU is no Montana Tech. Well, that's really been a strength defensively for BYU. Getting their hands in the passing lanes. Being aggressive with the loose balls. A moment ago, this is one of the turnovers, and those points off turnovers just continue to mount. Jim Fredette, great anticipation, taking it down. I don't know if you call that a dunk or not. <laughs> no, but you call it two, and that's all that really matters, isn't it? Exactly. Panos will go to the free throw line on this play and trying to chip away at that BYU lead as Miles is at the scorer's table. He'll go in between free throws. Panos with a miss on the front. Well, James Anderson, the redshirt freshman, giving BYU some nice minutes. Yeah, there's a look at Jimmer Fredette's numbers, 14 points. And, you know, you're right. You talk about Anderson's minutes, the luxury now of being able to rest Miles a little bit because Anderson comes in. He's not going to play the big minutes, but the minutes he's given Dave Rose so far tonight have been solid. They haven't lost a whole bunch when he's been in there. Well, they've got Gavin McGregor in there, too, you know, to come in and uh, 
Spell Miles and those guys look alike physically. Dave Rose has a nice luxury to have three big men. Yeah, and it's tough on the Wildcats because really the, the big body in there is panels. Yes, you do have Trevor Morris in there that you can bring in on occasion and, and Darren Mahoney, uh, the freshman out of Heber City. But, you know, size-wise, there's no question about it. The Cougars have the advantage in there and they will pound you with those big bodies. Well, particularly def defensively, you know, I, I think it really helps BYU to have those bodies in there. Kamard inside, Tavernari. He'll come in and play that low block. It scoops underneath and scores on Bollinger. What a nice move. You know, he steps back like he's going to take that little fadeaway 17-footer, steps underneath, lays it right up over the rim. And you have to respect it because he's, he is definitely not shy about shooting the jump shot. <laughs> Bollinger. His three rattles in and out. He hit three of those in a row in the first half. Maybe sometimes that's the worst thing that can happen because you fall in love with him. Now, Tavernari, again, I don't think he's hit a three all night, but that doesn't mean he hasn't shot him. That's not going to stop him from shooting him. You're right, Steve. Cougars will pull it back out and set the offense again with Lamont Morgan running the point. Great ball movement by BYU. That little turn and shoot by Kamard over number 31 Davis. That's a tough guard for him. But Davis is, is very active, but he's only 6'4. And with that quick release that you talked about with Lee Kamard at 6'7 makes it real tough to stop him. Oh, Bollinger had a nice, easy pass to the basket. But Ooh. Carson's pass off Kamard. Oh. Lee Kamard, 10 for 11 on the night. Now, Tavernari, who pulled the trigger on the three a few minutes ago, probably ought to stick to this one because this is a whole bunch better move for him. He'll post up down low if we want to roll this one. You see the ball come in, and there it is. Now, watch Bollinger. He bites on that inside shoulder fake, and then boom, right there. Just a little elbow to create a fulcrum effect, and he goes underneath and scores the easy basket. Well, Jonathan Tavernari's got a lot of tricks in that bag, and when he hits those threes, the points can uh, come in a hurry. Tavernari with the free throw as Morris will come in for Panos and McCoy checks in for Lillard, both for Randy Ray and Weaver State. Well, Jonathan Tavernari had the opportunity to play with the Brazilian national team in Athens, Greece last summer. Picked up a lot of valuable experience. Figures to be a mainstay on that team in the future. 67, 68, 49 now after the made free throw. That one didn't even move the net. And Weber State just in danger of losing contact here with BYU. Got a seven-game home floor winning streak going for the Wildcats in jeopardy now tonight as the Cougars in that zone defense. And Weber not able to break the zone over the top. There's Kamard running the floor. Saves it, but into the hands of McCoy. The pass a little bit too big for Lee Kamard. Well, and Dave Rose will take those. He wants his team to run in transition. And, uh, you know, good idea by Jim Fredette just led Lee Kamard a little bit too far. Turnaround shot is good. Trevor Morris with that little inside fake. And then back to the jump hook and he scores. Miles on the other end, he'll work against Morris. And the muscle shot goes in off the glass. Wow, tough shot. Chris Miles laid it up high off the glass. If he can make those this year consistently, that'll really help this BYU team. Morris on the other end. Anything you can do, I can do better right now. Both centers trying to go a little mano a mano, and it's working. The problem is that BYU has the lead 70 to 53, so basket for basket isn't going to do Weaver very much good. Got to get some stops defensively for the Wildcats. Clock is the friend of BYU. Inside 12 and a half minutes, the pass for Kamard. Didn't really have a passing lane in there to uh, do anything with a moment ago. It was the inside play as Morris gets the ball down deep. Yeah, nice little uh, fadeaway jump hook. 6'9", 235 from Nampa, Idaho. Trevor Morris. So BYU with the, the uh, lead. And you look at the shooting percentages, both teams shooting lights out, nearly 60%. McCoy from the outside, his three won't fall for him, and the rebound, no well, still anybody's ball, and now it's going to go to BYU. 
Can't get it back in a hurry, right, Andy? As Randy Ray's team, Randy Ray looks on. You, you've got to chip away at it. You didn't lose it all in a hurry, but you got 12 minutes, and so no reason to panic. Well, they, they really need to focus on the defensive end. Down here, uh, need to stop BYU from scoring three or four possessions and go down and get hoops themselves. So Gregory is back into that BYU, BYU lineup, and he gets the ball deep, maybe a little too deep. Now resets again, as Jackson Emery's also back. Forget. 15 on the shot clock and a little floater off the glass is good. Really fake going back outside, simply turned in and had the baseline. What a move, Jimmy Fredette. He's so comfortable out on the floor. The lead is 72 to 53. Nice pass. For Morgan Jackson the trailer. Emery. Yeah, Jackson Emery unselfish. We knew he had the trailer in Lamont Morgan. And now the lead is 21 for BYU. Randy Ray again wants to talk to his basketball team and it's somewhat similar to, to what's happened in games past and that is at halftime something happens to this Weber State team and they just don't have good second halves. Now they're trying to turn that around and they still have time but it is following a familiar pattern. This is Jimmer Fredette and watch a little stutter step and then boom the spin move as he goes to the baseline and off the glass. Yeah, a little crossover, spin move back to the baseline, kissed it off the glass. Jackson Emery being very unselfish, finding the open Lamont Morgan, who laid it up with the left hand. You know, BYU, 16 to 2 at halftime. I'm sure it's more like uh, 26 to, to 2 or 4 at this point. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. I'll tell you what, unless you own a bakery, it's not something you want. They are just uh, absolutely the bane of basketball teams. And tonight, BYU has made the meal out of them, if you'll uh, pardon the, extenu the extenuation of the uh, analogy. But, you know, when you want to look at the, uh, the game in microcosm, that last couple of plays that we saw there, the hustle play, the, the penetration, and then the turnover resulting in a basket, that has really hurt Weber State, and they've got to find a way to stop that. Well, you know, it really looks similar to the previous six games we've seen. BYU does such a nice job of really getting after it on the ball. And there is a move that you got to be happy about if you're Randy Ray, and he likes it from the bench, and that is Carson going to the basket, penetration right to the basket, getting fouled at an opportunity for the three-point play. And that's when we come back because BYU has the lead, but Weber State with the basket and a chance for a free throw. 74-55 is our total with 10.58 left in the game here from Ogden. I like to go to movies. I'm, I'm kind of a movie buff. I like to see a lot of movies, and I, I like to listen to music also. I just sometimes will put on the headphones and, and go for a walk, you know, just around wherever, and people think sometimes I'm weird to do that. I pretty much like anything that has Denzel Washington in it. I, I really like to remember the Titans, and I also like uh, mobster movies. I was the only member in my school, so they were always kind of my support system there. And, you know, everything that I've done, I've, you know, done it through them. Oh, it's been huge, obviously, just to have a family member that, you know, lives out here. It's, you can always, like, count on them to be there. She's always telling me, if you need anything, just give me a call, she'll be right down. And hopefully they'd say that, you know, he's a, he's a nice guy, first of, first of all. You know, he likes to, you know, be helpful to people and be kind and, you know, pe pe treat people the way that he would want to be treated and you know hopefully they would hopefully would say I'm a pretty good basketball player too in life you know I'm probably not as intense as I am on the basketball court but I try to you know help people out and try to boost up their their confidence as well just try to you know be you know if someone's looking down you know to go over there give them a pat on the back say how you doing today <laughs>